Hi, my name is Lindsay Lorraine. I'm an artist and I live in the North Okanagan. Do you feel joy when you get to work with your hands? Yeah, I definitely feel joy when I get to work with my hands. I graduated from high school and I thought I wanted like a real job. And so I studied art, but I always had this like conflict of wanting to study art, but wanting a job. So I kind of made my way through studying fine art into media and then worked in an animation studio for a few years. And it was at that point that I realized that I needed to not just only work with the computer, that I had to work with my hands and be outside and be experiencing things. So um, I think I was able to just follow what brings me joy um, in trying to make a career. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit more about your artistic process and uh, the pieces that you have at, at the Made by Hand show? Yeah, so I think my process is something that I always kind of carry around with me. It's always like in my pocket as I uh, live, live my life day to day. So I can be anything from just relaxing at the end of the day through drawing or um, kind of having a big idea like you see something out in the world and you're like why is that made so why is it so convoluted this thing that's made when I'm sure I could just make it myself so it's both kind of like a like a therapy like a personal expression but also kind of like a quest to um, solve some problems that maybe we're seeing in society. Uh, when you make a piece do you um, sit down and design it or do you have it in your mind's eye? Yeah, I, I think I have it designed beforehand just because I am quite a, like a deep thinker and I think about things quite a lot before I'm maybe ready to do it. And often I do feel like I can just sit down and make something and that's pretty, pretty much what I wanted. Um, but I also, in saying that, I allow myself a lot of... Um, flexibility when I am making something and I try to have like a lot of forgiveness so if I'm drawing I'll try not to be too precious or I'll allow um, different things to happen when I'm actually making the work but um, I do pretty much have it sorted out beforehand. Does your work convey a message, intent, concept or philosophy and if so could you just explain a little bit more about that? I think the work in the show right now um yeah it has definitely like a philosophy um of sort of stillness um i'm thinking a lot about just like my own mind and kind of staying really like calm and peaceful and just um trying to embrace like my own expanded awareness so that piece is um a reference to a landscape and so like a moment that's very still and quiet would you be able to comment on uh, influences, inspirations, um, maybe mentors uh, around your work and, and how, how those influences and inspirations kind of manifest in the work that you, that you do? Okay, so this work that I have in the show, um, it's inspired by a series of drawings that I did um, quite a few years ago. Um, and those drawings at the time, I was really inspired by Helen Frankenthaler and also David Milne. So sort of taking a simple gesture um, into landscape. So as my practice has kind of evolved into textiles and a little more away from um, watercolors and paintings, I still was referencing those original influences, but through the form of textile with do you associate with being an artisan or an artist I actually feel probably more comfortable with artisan but I'm getting more comfortable with artist as well I think there's this funny dichotomy of just like claiming a, a word but then as soon as you kind of claim it you're also not that so it, it's kind of interesting to want to uh, brand yourself using those words but I do really think that artisan for me is um, a word that's more comfortable just because it's uh, kind of directly associated with the skill. Um, and, and then just thinking about art um, 
you know, art you can find any anywhere. So you can find art in from dog training to nursing to textiles. Um, so I think artisan is like a really good entry point for a lot of people. Do you think that society treats artists and artisans differently? What do you notice about these preconceptions? Do you think one is placed higher than the other in society? I guess it just depends um, on how the individual has, like how an individual has their own outlook. So it's kind of up to you if, if you have those as barriers as, or not. And I think, I'm kind of coming from the, I think I've finally kind of climbed to the top of that ball, whereas a younger version of myself really struggled with the, the naming and how I fit in and who I am. And I think as soon as you kind of release that pressure, you actually get to just be on top of it and, and decide for yourself what those words are and what they mean to you. Um, and then you can kind of free yourself to make whatever work you want at that point. The final question that I have for you is, do you think being an artist or an artisan changes the value or price that you set for the work that you offer out into the world? Yeah, probably. That's a good question. It probably does. But again, I think it depends on um, the, the parameters you set for yourself and the audience to who you are communicating with. So you could be an artist and be producing artwork, um, but be kind of living in a community where the prices are either extremely high or extremely affordable. So I think it just depends also as an artisan, what community you are involved with and supporting. Um, and I think the more that you kind of look around and um, investigate and talk to people, you can find that there's a big variety of communities that are um, supporting both types of making, either fine art or uh, craftsmanship.